Hey guys, my name is Emily Burke. I'm a naturalist at Grass River Natural Area. I hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy and sane. Um, today, I thought it'd be fun to do a tour of a cedar swamp, which is also called a rich conifer swamp. It's the most abundant habitat type that we have at Grass River Natural Area. It comprises over 500 of our 492 acres that we have in the preserve. And it's important because it's super biologically diverse. Um, our cedar swamp has a floristic quality index of 69.1 and anything over 50 is deemed as having major biological value to the state. Um, and that number is just calculated based on the total number of plant species in any given habitat and also um, how specific each of those plant species habitat requirements are. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we have the cedar swamp's namesake uh, tree. These are northern white cedars. Um, and their bark is very shredded, almost like a cat went after them with its claws. And the foliage is unlike a pine tree, which has, you know, like what we think of as conifer needles. Um, a cedar has flattened scales instead. They almost look like they're braided to me. And once you get um, used to looking for that search image, they're really easy to identify. Um, and another thing about cedar trees is they grow in areas where the water table is really high. So they have really shallow root systems, which leaves them susceptible to wind throw or being thrown over, toppled by the wind. Um, and so that's a really important structural component of cedar swamps because uh, new cedar trees will actually sprout out of um, those logs, either because that's a way that cedar trees vegetatively reproduce as they can send up new shoots, or if the log, if the tree that was thrown over does die and starts to decompose, different tree species like new cedars, but also balsam firs or tamaracks or maybe hemlocks will sprout out of that log because of the rich organic material that's starting to decompose in there. And that, that's when, um, those are called nurse logs. So. Cedar trees are really important structurally because they make up most of the canopy in a cedar swamp, but also um, when they do fall over, they give rise to a lot of new vegetation. So here's a good example of a cedar tree re-sprouting vegetatively from an old cedar tree that was toppled over by wind. Um, you can see that the new sprout started growing to the left and then went whoop, straight up right to the sunlight. Okay, so a common subdominant tree in the cedar swamp is a balsam fir, uh, and that's this guy right here. They're pretty easy to identify. Um, they have these lenticles or lenticels on their bark, uh, which are basically bumped up like dashes all over the bark. Um, and there's actually gas exchange happening right here. So the tree is giving off oxygen and taking in CO2. Um, and then their foliage is more what we think of as conifer foliage looking like as opposed to the cedars um, kind of flattened scales. The balsam fir has uh, actual needles um, and they're, I like to remember what balsam fir needles look like based on the term flat and friendly, which, um, you know, both start with F like fir. Um, so they're flat, meaning that they come out of the twig on either side, but not all the way around the twig, so it has a pretty flat profile. Um, and then friendly, meaning that they're not pokey. You can run your finger along the end of them and they don't poke you in the way like pine and spruce needles poke you. All right, so the most dominant um, understory tree or shrub in the cedar swamp is a tag alder, also called a speckled alder because it has these speckles on the bark. Um, which are also lenticels, just like the balsam firs bark. Um, and they're pretty easy to identify because they hold on to last year's fruit um, on their twigs. So they look almost like tiny little pine cones. That's last year's fruit. And alders are important for the health of a cedar swamp because they house uh, bacteria in nodules on their roots that is actually able to fix nitrogen in the soil in the same way that um, beans and legumes are able to do in agricultural fields. So you can see that the forest floor of a cedar swamp is quite bare. 
and it will be this way in the height of the growing season too. The reason for that is the um, alkaline soils here make it hard for things to grow here except those uh, species that are specifically adapted for this type of environment. There will be some ferns like sensitive cinnamon and royal ferns and there will be some sedges. Uh, and in, in addition to that, some plants that grow here are carnivorous in order to make up for those nutritional deficiencies that they can't get from the soil. So one example of a carnivorous plant is uh, a round leaf sundew, and those work by attracting insects with the droplets of um, nectar-like substance on their uh, hairs. And then the plant will sense when the insect lands on the hairs and then it starts to kind of engulf the insect um, by wrapping the tendrils around and also starts to digest the insect until it's an uh, insect goo and then it sucks it up and is able to um, absorb it into its leaves. And then another carnivorous plant that exists in the cedar swamp is a pitcher plant and those work by uh, attracting insects again with the sort of nectar sweet smelling um, liquid and then the insect lands on the pitcher plant and it's almost like a tube and then um, the insect loses their footing on the waxy coating of the, of the lip and uh, either fall immediately into the digestive juices in the bottom or um, start to slip and then there's a series of downward pointing hairs that line the tube and so the insect, it's basically a, a one-way street. The insect isn't able to get back out again. And then those digestive juices at the bottom um, start to break down the insect so the plant can use it for nutrition. Um, in addition to those gruesome things, there's also uh, some really amazing wildflowers that exist in a cedar swamp, like um, quite a few orchids. We've got uh, yellow lady slippers, showy lady slippers and purple fringed orchids specifically in the cedar swamp and then there are lots of other beautiful wildflowers two of my favorites are cardinal flower and monarda both of which bloom in mid to late summer so one of the common birds in a cedar swamp are pileated woodpeckers those really big woodpeckers with the big red crest on the top of their head um, and these oblong holes right here are really indicative of pileateds uh, looking for grubs and bugs. So in addition to the pileated woodpeckers, other common birds in the cedar swamp are several species of birds of prey, like bald eagles, which use the creeks that run through cedar swamps. Um, also, barred owls love to nest here. Um, also, several species of hawks um, like red-shouldered hawks, which are threatened in the state of Michigan, and um, excipiters like sharp shinned hawks and Cooper's hawks, which are really hard to tell apart. I saw um, one of them fly down the creek earlier just before I started filming today. That was pretty neat. Um, there's also ruffed grouse, uh, which this time of year, just like a week or two ago, I started hearing them. Um, they don't make vocalizations in the breeding season, but what they do instead is beat their wings against their chest. And it makes a sound that to me um, has that same quality of like when a marching band um, passes you at a parade and you kind of feel it in your chest, you know? It sounds like like it starts out slow and then gets faster. That wasn't a very good imitation, but you can use your imagination. Um, Let's see, oh, belted kingfishers too, which are one of my favorite birds because the females are actually flashier than the males for once. The females have um, a chestnut belly band and the males uh, don't and they just have the blue-gray breast band. The females have that too. Um, oh, and then one of the quintessential sounds of a cedar swamp is the call or the song of a white-throated sparrow in the spring. They should start singing in about a month here. Um, and it sounds like And it's um, very clear, whistly. Um, you rarely see those birds, but you hear them a lot in the spring and summer in a cedar swamp. Common mammals in the cedar swamp include white-tailed deer, especially in the winter time. Uh, they eat the cedar leaves. It's an important uh, source of winter food for them, but also the snow is generally less deep in a cedar swamp in the winter than it is in surrounding areas because of the really dense vegetation. So it's easier for the deer to travel. 
Um, also snowshoe hare are common here. They browse the balsam fir in the winter and where there are snowshoe hare there are bobcats. So you see a lot of bobcat tracks in a cedar swamp. Also uh, red squirrels which eat the balsam fir cones and they're kind of funny because whenever you walk by uh, they'll they do this really scolding sort of chattery sound it's like, it's like and it always sounds so ferocious but they're so small that it's kind of cute um let's see also oh river otters which are fan favorite um they frequent the creeks in the cedar swamp at grass river um, and then as far as amphibians go, we've got quite a few frog species that use the cedar swamp. In a couple weeks, uh, spring peepers, gray tree frogs, and wood frogs will start to call from the cedar swamp. And then snakes include the, our only venomous snake in Michigan, the Massasauga. Um, it's a species of rattlesnake. We've never actually seen it at Grass River, but it might exist there. Um, it's quite secretive and very non-aggressive at all, so don't worry. Um, also, northern water snakes. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you learned something. Uh, check back next week for another Grass River micro class and take care of yourselves.